today we are going to start a new topic called concentration inequalities we saw independence notion of independence how to use it in hessian last time uh, we have a completely new topic and it relates to what we have done before obviously so if you remember we found this aggregate quantity called expectation for a random variable x at that time i told you that you have to remember what this quantity represents if you still remember it basically says that if we repeat the experiment for x multiple times so there is an experiment led to x uh, every time we do the experiment some value of x will come out if we repeat this experiment for x multiple times then the average value of x approaches to a of x this was the meaning given to the expectation of x so we repeat the experiment then the average value of x in this multiple times as n tends to infinity the average value will tend to e of x so concentration equalities are a way to formalize this what do we mean how proofs do they approach what number of experiments we have to done all these kind of things we will see today there is another way to look at the same thing which would be that uh, in this case if we are given the expectation of a random variable uh, we could have more aggregate quantities one of them which we will see today is called the variance so given these aggregate quantities what can we say about the distribution of x can we say something how about where x lies what kind of properties does it satisfy the first such quantity we will study is called markov's inequality the statement is not very difficult even the proof is not difficult so let's just model it ourselves so suppose i am given a random variable which lies between 0 and 1 and you are given that the expected value of x is equal to half so can we say that x does not take value on so the expected value of x is half can we say with certainty that x does not take value some amount of thought will show that this is completely incorrect there are many random variables which take value one with some probability and still the expectation could be half what about x can't take the value x value one with probability more than half with probability more than is this correct so i give it as an exercise to prove that this is indeed correct if the value of x lies between 0 and 1 and expected value of x is half then x cannot take value 1 with probability more than half if it does then there will be something wrong with the calculation of expectation pause the video to prove it even if you can't prove it the next theorem will prove it for you so markov's equality says if x is positive that means it only takes positive values and we are given some a greater than 0 then probability that x is bigger than a is bounded by expected value of x divided by a so you see that the expected value of x tells us how big x can be under some conditions so you have to remember that x is a positive random variable here then only we can apply this equality inequality the proof is not going to be difficult as suggested in the previous exercise we just have to look at the calculation for expectation 
So what is the calculation for expectation? It is summation over all values which x can take probability that x is equal to x multiplied by x. And now I can divide it into two cases. Summation x less than a plus summation x more than a. Now we use some of the properties of x. First is that x is always positive. That's why this quantity will be bigger than probability is always bigger and the small x will always be positive because capital X is a positive random variable. So this is what I get. And now noticing that x is greater than a, this is probability y is equal to x. So this shows that <coughs> This quantity summation x is equal to a x equal to x is nothing but probability. So this implies that probability x greater than a is less than expected value of x divided by a. So we did the calculation, but the intuition was pretty simple. Let me put it in one word. The probability x greater than a, if this quantity is very big, then the contribution itself of this quantity will be bigger than the expectation. So this will contribute more than E of x in the calculation of E of x. That is the contribution. So a simple inequality, simple proof. Let's change uh, the dot the aggregate quantity slightly and see if we can write more inequalities. So it starts with limitation of Markov's inequality. The expectation tells you something about the random variable but not a lot. Consider a random variable which is 0 with probability 1. Another, another random variable which takes value 2 with probability half, minus 2 with probability half, Take another random variable which takes value 1000 with probability half, minus 1000 with probability half. Or take a random variable which takes this value with probability half like this. You will realize that expectation of all of these quantities is zero. But their behavior is pretty different. In one case, the value goes close to zero, like this, but you see that expectation does not tell you how far away you can be for the expected value. So, in one experiment, you can be very, very far away from E of x. So, that's why we define this quantity called variance. And it basically measures how much x varies from ex. Okay, there is going to be a scalar, there is not going to be a random variable. We want to quantify how much x is away from ex. So the intuition would be that the variance should be very, very low here and very, very high in this case. 